highest ranked prospect in Ludwig Hornquist. Let's see how he turns out. And he's 68 rated. Oh, that is a sixth round pick and a half. Wow. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 35 of this NHL 22 Minnesota Wild franchise mode here in the state of hockey on my channel. If you guys have missed episodes up to this point, head up into that top corner. And if you do enjoy this one, show your support by going down below, dropping a like, subscribing, and hitting notifications to never miss these uploads. So last episode, we had an early elimination in the playoffs as the Minnesota Wild were knocked out in a, I believe, six... Nope, seven game series to the Colorado Avalanche. So total upset, but it happens sometimes and there's really not a lot we can do about it. We played hard, we lost, and we just get a slightly higher draft pick now because of that. So Colorado moves on, a bunch of other teams move on, and of course the Iowa Wild have moved on. They're down one nothing right now to Grand Rapids, so we will follow that. But we got to do scouting too because this upcoming draft looks like it's going to be a really good one. Um, but that's just my kind of take on it and the prospects we've got pinned right now. So... Yeah, looking at the prospects, there are actually quite a few guys in here that I am interested in that could potentially be Minnesota draft picks here coming up pretty soon. So looking at the X factors on a lot of these uh, early second rounders, there are some serious players in here. We might potentially make a trade up to, we'll see what happens, but just remember that, um, that a guy like um, Jesus, I don't know if it's Jesus or Jesus, one of the two. I'm going to say Jesus Pino for now, um, just because he's playing in the OHL. But he looks like a really decent player, could have some really good X factors on him too if the scouting actually comes in. And yeah, we'll see just what else happens here. I've got quite a few guys I'm interested in and we'll see how they pan out. So that's what we're looking at for prospects. But as that scouting continues, we will continue on through the playoffs here. So I'm going to say I'm about two or three weeks at a time, jump out, do scouting, and then jump back in. But uh, let's just, you know, watch this Grand Rapids series uh, take place. So they're down one nothing to start off this series, make it 1-1, one, 2-1 one, one for Iowa. All right, not bad. 3-1 for, for Iowa against Grand Rapids. And they don't knock them out in game six or game five. So we head to game six and Iowa will be moving on to take on either San Diego or Bakersfield. So decent series there. Rochester moves on easily against Toronto. And apart from that, it uh, doesn't look like anybody else has really been moving on yet in the NHL. So we'll keep an eye on that too. But um, we just got a couple more days to advance here to hopefully get the AHL playoffs determined. And I think I'm going to jump back and do more scouting here. Something else I wanted to talk to you guys about here in this video is our contract situation. And looking at our current contracts, we do have some really decent deals in here, but certain guys like Lapierre and Oduya got paid a lot of money just because it was the only way we could pay them. Looking at the rest of the contracts, everybody is worth the deals that they're on. It's more so just a matter of who is going to be the biggest issue here. Because when we look at all of our expiring deals here, especially on overall rating, you will see, yeah, Jakob Habibulin and Jermaine McGinn both are going to be expecting decent deals here. So we're going to have to pay those guys. Ben Carlson too. Same with Troy Chen as well. There are lots of guys that we just cannot afford at this current moment. So Habibulin's looking for a $4.75 million deal for three years, which is actually really good. Two and a half for McGinn isn't bad. If we look at Paris, he's cheap. Um, Carlson's only going to want 1.7 and Chen wants like five. So if we add all that up, I don't think we can clear that cap in just one go, but it's also not going to be far off. So yeah, in total contract cost, we're looking at about $14 million, which is not great. If we times that by 85%, it's a little bit better at 11.8, but still it's expensive. So that is an issue and it's something that we're going to have to come across in the off season that we just simply cannot afford. Um, I believe, oh no, we're not doing too, too bad for goalies, but I think uh, Samu Pitkinen will be on his way out. Apart from that, uh, we will very likely be seeing Latipov and Antropov signed, maybe Lander, but I, I think Johan Lander could potentially be a piece that we trade here at the upcoming draft as well. So there are options. There's lots of moves we could make. And just looking at the system, you know, there's just too much money to really move around. But, you know, a few guys could be on the trade radar, especially a guy like, 
you know, Guy Bonnet, who really, you know, he was good in the playoffs. He was 82 points in 82 games. He hasn't been particularly bad for us, but at the same time, he's like his role could very easily get filled by a guy like Jakob Havi Bulin instead, who, yes, he's still third line scoring. He's been really decent for us, and his system fit is quite good. So there are options there. But apart from that, you know, Troy Chen is very likely another one that we could move in exchange for, you know, there are defensemen down in the system that are just better, that are emerging, that are looking like they're going to be absolutely amazing in the future. Guys like Ruslan Kavasha, he's going to be nice and cheap. He's very likely a guy we bring in um, onto the third pairing or something along those lines. So there are options. We're going to make trades. I'm just preparing you guys for that. So heading into this next round against Bakersfield here, we're going to advance a little bit further, hopefully see the team do well. Um, and they could potentially make it to um, the Calder Cup Finals here if they do well. So two OT wins is a great start. And all right, sweep them. That's perfect. All right, we will take on Rochester next, who very obviously must have swept their series too. And by the looks of it, the... Colorado Avalanche are already out of the playoffs, so that's a little bit um, disheartening for Minnesota to show that we weren't even that close to a Stanley Cup this year, so that kind of sucks, but we're taking on Rochester. Let's see how the first three games go here, and three losses in a row. Wow. Okay, so um, I would say at this point, the Rochester Americans are just the best team in the league. That very well might be the case, and yeah, that very well could be the case just based on the fact that they've got a guy like Boris Kachuk. And even like Robin Sala. Wow, that is a stacked team. My goodness. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a really top heavy Rochester team there. So not really surprising that they're taking it to Iowa. But at the same time, I was hoping for a little bit of a better performance out of our team here. They're still a really good team as well. And just haven't quite ended up going or ended up uh, playing the way I expected them to. Although injuries have played a part in that as well. So that's unfortunate, but that's how it goes sometimes. So we very well will see an Iowa elimination here in the next game or two. And I just want to double check that all my prospects are getting drafted or er, scouted here. All right, so heading into game four here against Rochester, this is very likely going to be an elimination, but we start off well, 11 shots, one goal. Second period, that's it. 4-1, I do not see them coming back from this, so props to Rochester. They have very likely just won the Calder Cup. Heading into the third, 5-1, yeah. Okay, good good game, good game. It's done. 7-1, ouch. Yeah, we just got beat by Boris Kachuk, essentially. But, um, ouch, that was not a very good finals performance from Iowa. At least they made the final, but yikes. <laughs> Bit of a disappointing playoff run from both teams this year, as uh, we don't really get it going. But let's jump towards the draft and hopefully get some things figured out with this team for heading into the next season. All right, and for award winners this year, the Detroit Red Wings would win the Stanley Cup, and the Rochester Americans, of course, beat out Iowa in the finals. So looking at Detroit's run, they beat Vegas in the finals after Vegas beat Dallas, who beat... Yeah, we weren't even close, but Detroit beats... Vegas, Columbus, Buffalo, and of course Toronto in the first round there. So Rochester went through just about everybody. It, wow, wow, wow. Rochester had a perfect run. They literally went 15 and 0. Like they did not lose a game. That is impressive. And we got swept by them too. Wow. I've never seen a perfect playoff sweep like that from an AI team. I don't think that's ever happened. So. Wow. Also, how about Russell Kavasha? Hey, he's got to have some awards in there after this season. But, you know, decent amount of team awards for Iowa. Um, yeah, Kavasha wins the Les Cunningham. Most valuable player in the AHL. That's impressive. Willie Marsh. Johnston, hey, I didn't I didn't check how many goals he had. Uh, Coco wins the Dudley. I guess, yeah, Kavasha won it last year. Kavasha wins the Eddie Shore. Makes sense. Strudwick, okay. That's good. Back-to-back -back goalies, Piero Zabato and Strudwick with the Baz there. Um, no Butterfields for our team. We haven't been winning the Calder Cup Finals. Um, Philip Boutin is absolutely insane. My goodness, Strudwick there and Piero Zabato win the half homes. Looking really good. Wow. Okay, this is, this is decent. So, you know, decent amount of player awards there for Iowa. Surprising amount, actually. But in the NHL... Um, 
Bit of an interesting lopsided year this year, but hiking in with the Art Ross, point with the heart. Norse goes to Cider this year, okay. Point also wins back-to-back -back Lady Bing's third in his career. Uh, Locke wins the Calder. Um, Kondratev, really, Locke won the Calder. Really? Over Mario Cote, hey? That is interesting because Mario Cote, wow. What? How? How did... How did Francis Locke win that over Mario Cote? That's a little, uh, that's a little disturbing, actually. It's not what I was expecting for player awards this year, but, you know, it happens, so. Um, where were we? Anyways, the Norris doesn't go to the right guy, but that's okay. Kondratik wins the Con Smite this year, good for him. Vutalainen gets the Vesna. Wallstead wins back-to-back -back. Jennings, not bad. Gibbons there wins the Masterton. Yandel. Yandel wins Jack Adams. Keith Yandel in Ottawa. Interesting. Connor Levies wins the Selkie. Braden Point with the Lindsay. And Heikinen, of course, with the Rocket. All right, guys. So we are going to sim to the draft. I think the prospects are all set here and ready to go. Vancouver moves from 5-1 to one to win the first overall pick. We're going to be picking at 16 with Nashville's pick there, so that's not terrible. Um, but we'll see what else happens in this draft. It's going to be an interesting one, and we definitely have to clear some cap space, but we'll see how it goes with players and who's available to trade we might be trying to trade up a little bit here but we'll see what happens so um i do want to show you guys this draft class we're looking at here and just the players i'm looking at specifically so zachary fenton looks like a really good player to your eta zykov is oh my god he's sitting at a two-year eta at like 242 wow wow so we're gonna land some steals this draft i can guarantee that um mcchesney looks really good gormley's okay he's a low six but he might be our seventh rounder um uh, god hornquist as well these guys look insane okay so uh jared rasmussen also looks good uh pino i want to take earlier he's a guy i would like to trade up for apart from that dominguez might be an elite but like tarnstrom's guaranteed shovel dave's guaranteed there are a lot of guys guaranteed that more or less lineup with our picks here. Look at this, another two-year ETA player in Emiliano Mickelson. We are going to load up on talent in this draft. Like, it, this might be the best draft we ever see in this franchise mode. And that's saying something, considering some of the drafts we've had. But, retirees here, we'll see Tavares, Sagan, Gallagher, Declare. I mean, the first three all hit over a thousand points, which is very impressive in their careers. Apart from that, you know, feel free to pause if you want to look at a specific player, but that's what we're looking at. I don't think we see any Minnesota retirees this year. Some decent goalies too, but again, nobody super crazy. And again, not really sure if any of these guys, maybe like Viva Line, and I don't even think any of these guys are drafted by Minnesota. So that's your retiree class this year. So Max Domi becomes a coach. Okay, so... Looking at retiring coaches this year, and we're going to see none of our coaches. Perfect. Okay, so let's get into this draft. This is going to be a very interesting one. And to go on the trade block this year, I got to pick out some names because well, looking at things here just with overall ratings and player types and who's going to fit the team best and into the future, uh, this is tough. This is really tough because, you know, a guy like Marco Rossi was amazing, but really didn't have a great season for his caliber and what he's been able to do in the past. Guy Bonnet probably would fit on the first line fine, but do we really want to go with a younger center core here? I don't know if that's necessarily the play. Nine and a half million clears up a lot of cap space if we do end up trading Rossi, but at the same time, looking at the money value in some of these other players it's hard to determine who's actually going and who's staying so uh, yeah oh this is gonna be tough so we'd have to clear up 13 million to sign the like four players we we want to sign if we do a little less than that then i only trade one player and that one player comes down to either Rossi, Boldy, or Bonnet. And at this point, 
Matthew Boldy's over a thousand points in his career. Marco Rossi's pushing it, but he's not there yet. He's had some down years for sure as well. Like despite being an assist king, he he wasn't off to the heart, hottest start in his career, but he's also had some hundred plus assist seasons. The only issue with this team at the current moment is that I do think we have too many playmakers. I think that is the biggest issue. I mean, it's it's close between playmakers and snipers because a guy like Lapierre is a sniper. A guy like Nijkov is a sniper. I guess snipers are kind of the piece that we don't necessarily need. Uh, we could use a two-way forward. We could use a power forward. But at the same time, with a guy like... Um, where is he? With a guy like Happy Bullen, he's still a playmaker. McGinn's still a sniper. Like we still have pieces that aren't necessarily being replaced or aren't being substituted. Like we still have other players to cover those roles. So <sighs> I'm torn here because I don't want to trade. I don't want to trade anybody to be completely honest. But we have to. So <sighs> I didn't realize Erickson had dropped off too. That kind of sucks. But we still have the elite defensemen, top fours, where they're at, are fine, especially with, you know, guys like Sexton and Erickson. They're very good players. So, all right, Krajicek likely gets traded um, along with... <sighs> I'm going to say Guy Bonnet. Those are the two that I think we need to move. But I think we could get some really good pieces back for them too. So let's get into this, see how this goes, because it's going to be an interesting draft. But we're not trading up for a top, top pick. We might trade up for like pick like 9 or 10, right in that range, to potentially land one of the guys I'm looking at here. Um, if we see any other players fall, I might try to make a move. This Weston guy looks really good too if we can't get a higher pick and yeah that's how we're looking for the draft so uh we're gonna aim for well first off let's sim a couple picks see how it goes so kennedy goes first not surprising yashin goes second okay i think that was the play third we're gonna see hogan okay fourth we're gonna see or pick all right again interesting top five picks then doherty okay Who's left here for elite players? Rousseau, Whitman, and maybe Engren? Okay, so let's see what happens here. So, picks... Okay, Whitman goes... Whitman goes. It was supposed to be Rousseau there. Okay, if Rousseau doesn't get picked here, we'll try to trade for pick number eight. And he doesn't. All right, let's do it. Carolina, how you doing? We want that Hurricanes pick, and I think this is the perfect place to offload. So, they've got no cap space. Oh, that's Calgary. Okay, that makes more sense. Carolina, 2.9 million, roughly, in tradable assets. I want to see, can we potentially get... They've got a sixth rounder in here. I'm going to try to pull that one, too, because there are a couple prospects that I would love to pick up. Apart from that, we've got a lot of good picks this year, so... Let's see, goalies, we could trade off Lander, that would be a smart move, and we could trade off Bonnet, so I think that's the move here, they would be over the max cap at 9 million bucks, are these guys expiring, anybody, please, oh, we might have to eat a contract here for a year, that's not particularly great, okay, if we go Sogard for 3, and then... Tepley for two and a half. That almost gets it over. Okay, so we might have to take on, like... We can't take on another contract, though. That's the problem. What about Najelkovic, too? We would have too many goalies, then. All right. What other goalie prospect do you want? Uh, we could do... Ramsey. Okay, this is a big deal trade. Oh, maybe not. How would we have... Oh, we would have literally too many goalies. Okay. Okay, so at that point, I think we trade probably Schaefer. He's the least likely to develop out of all these guys, so we'll do him. And then we trade another random piece here. So, skaters matching the block. 
Let's trade uh, Martin. Oh, not Martinson. Uh, maybe Mendez. Yeah, okay. Even though Mendez was okay, that is a big trade to throw in here. But we're going to do it. We want that eighth overall pick. Let's take it. We're replacing Bonnet with an elite player here. Wow, that's a big deal. All right. Wow. Now that we have pick eight, I really do think that it would be worth it to trade for pick nine as well because first off we're getting a really good prospect in lucas rousseau a better prospect than we probably should be getting 86 points in 71 games he looks phenomenal but along with that i really want a two-way forward for like our bottom six for this upcoming year and i'm actually kind of torn because i don't know who the best like i think pino is going to be the best just based on the fact that he's got x factors and everything so I want pick nine as well. I want to see what Washington would offer for pick number nine, um, because I wouldn't mind snagging it. It would really help us out, and no trades available. Cool, so let's offer a trade here. So I think the main thing we're looking to do in a Washington deal here is just grab this pick. So let's try this deal again here. Uh, we're going to go Peltola, Chen, and Caberlet in exchange for Haglin, the 9th, and the 201st overall picks. And I think this is going to be a spot on deal because we're trading three players or prospects for two other prospects and Haglin. And Haglin, I don't care about. We could resign potentially, but we'll see how the roster space is. So let's go with that. It doesn't go through, so maybe we toss a first rounder or something else along those lines. Maybe not a first, maybe like a maybe our second rounder next year that might just sweeten the deal enough and it does not okay shoot calgary traded up to pick seven and missed the guy <laughs> what is going on okay um okay so if we can't get pino i want to get weston then um and he's at pick 11 or 12 let's see if the sharks want to do a deal so Pino goes next. Okay, he's actually a really nice player, but he's only 76 rated, so that's not really that spectacular. Okay, so let's do this. Let's try this anyways. Peltola, Andrews, and Chen in exchange for 11th, 203rd, Fast, and Asplund. Does it go through? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, that's good. All right, we'll take that. All right, now pick 10, Backlund goes. All right, oh, Backlund was a nice defenseman too, but that's okay. I think we've got other picks lined up here that are gonna, going to uh, really turn into something here. All right, so now that all our picks are in line, now that we've got everything sorted out here with this team, let's get to this. So we're ready to really start laying off some picks, firing them off one at a time. So I'm going to take Joshua Weston with the next pick here, and he is a 79 rated two-way forward. Exactly what this team needs in that bottom roll kind of position. If not, we can develop him for a year, but that's okay. So after that, Solis is a good player. Same with Langfeld, this draft was just stacked this year. So Zykov, also a really nice defensive defenseman, but next up at pick number 16, we are going to go with the guy that I think is going to be the next best player in the draft there in Vincent Boutin. I mean, Renus might be good, but I'd rather go with the system fit in Boutin, or Boutin, Boutin, however you say his name, um, over a couple other guys there. So we're going to take him, right-handed, two-way offensive defenseman, Vincent Boutin. is an interesting one, but we'll take him hopefully develop him a little bit more before he really gets some NHL action. But Renus was a 75. I think we made the right choice there. Drafting another 78, 79 rated player. That's three really highly rated prospects and players here. So I think what's going to happen is a guy like Russo is going to get signed, but is going to end up very likely in the Oh, he might not end up in the NHL for his first year. We might let him develop, but if he's not developing, we might have to sign him something along those lines. So next up with pick number 26, we're going to take Zachary Fenton, and he looks like a really good two-way forward, and he's 68 rated to be exact. Not a great skater, but that's okay. We'll make do with what we have, 
and over to pick 33 to start off the second round now. And I think we're going off the board a little bit just to take a guaranteed low elite in Noel McChesney. Interesting player, boring leader, guaranteed on him, as well as a bunch of other stats. He kind of reminds me of, um, of Nick Foligno, to be honest. Or sorry, not Nick, Marcus Foligno, um, just with his play style. Second rounder, he could, you know, one day potentially be this team's captain. We'll see what happens, but... There's a lot of time between then and him even making the NHL still as... Oh, look at that player there, Logan Reese. Missing an elite grinder, not just a low elite, but an actual like elite grinder. So that's an interesting one that we miss out on, but that's okay because we're going to go with another grinder because apparently grinders are just all over the place here in this draft. And we're going to take Jeremy Shovel Dave. He didn't look great, but we'll take him here at pick 51. So we got another pick coming up, but Shevel Dave, 61 rated, really good X-Factors again. So we'll see how those grinders develop. They're going to be interesting players for sure. Ooh, Thompson was nice too. He was 20 though. Um, high starter there in Roger Eaves, but we are guaranteed going to take Dominic Davis here out of the Extra Liga there off of Cladno. And he's rated as a gem, medium elite, only 48 rated though. So not a fantastic second round goalie selection, but who knows? He might prove us all wrong and end up being the most elite goalie this team's ever seen. Who knows? Because Minnesota has been all up in the air with cold tending. But apart from that, over to pick 87 now. And I think we're going off the board here a ways. So reason being, there are some elite prospects coming up here. And I'm not thinking Kazemnikov so much, even though he does look good. Um, I'm thinking Tarnstrom, and then right after that, I'm actually looking at, where is he? Mickelson here. He's a two-year ETA. That's insane. But we're going to go with Tarnstrom first, just because he's somehow more highly ranked out of prospects. And not only that, but if his offensive instinct, shot utilization, and work ethic are all as good as they say he is, then he's going to be in the NHL within less than five years, but we'll see what happens, and he's 54 rated. Okay, really good third rounder there. We haven't had great luck drafting at pick 87 in the past, but we'll see what happens there. Apart from that, now we're going off the board a little ways here. We're going to take Mickelson at pick 90. It's an interesting pick, but I think it's worthwhile, and it definitely is, as he's 67 rated. Yeah, Emiliano Mickelson's going to be a legit player too. Just shot up point-wise in Ruan Noranda there with the Huskies. And yeah, that's a good pick. Oh, Gorin was a decent player there. Tyson Gorin's a good defenseman apart from that. Same with Breen. Nicholas Breen's got some potential. Um, lots of low potential players. Delmore, decent goalie, but he is 20. And not a fantastic start to the fourth round. How was the rest of the third here? Um, not overly spectacular. We land the best players there in potentially two amazing snipers for the future. Next up is Aiden Stamkos that we could take, but he's low six. I was really hoping he was going to be an elite, and that just didn't happen. So with that not materializing, we go down to the next player that I think is going to be really good in Isaiah Dominguez. Um... We'll see if he develops, but I don't actually know how good he's going to be. I am taking a bit of a risk here. No weaknesses, though, which I'm counting on. And is he elite? No, he's not, but he is a 50-rated 2-8 or 50-rated 6-3 defensive defenseman. In the fourth round, that's not a terrible pick. We'll take it, but I'm sure we could have. Yeah, Simons would have been better, in my opinion. Those wingers actually develop. Darren Faith would have been better. Than, there was a lot of guys that probably would have been better than Dominguez, but we do draft another D Dominguez, which is actually kind of cool. Ludwig Head in there as well, or Hedin is also a very good player. So yeah, that was a bit of an interesting one, but I took Dominguez as well, thinking about AJ Dominguez, who we drafted a couple of years back and has actually developed into a decent player, um, looking like he might actually make the NHL at some point here soon. And yeah, AJ Dominguez was a 160th overall pick, so Isaiah going at 122 isn't really crazy, but it is a little bit higher than his brother, potentially. So next up, we are going to go with Philip Novak, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yes, we are. All right, so Novak at 154. And he is also a low elite, or a medium elite goalie, uh, 47 rated, so one lower than Dominic Davis, but two elite goalies there that could potentially be really good. Um, and look at the, yeah, look at the prospects we still got to go here. So let's keep it going over to pick 168 now. And this is where picks really start going way off the board, but that's okay because look at the prospects we still got to pick from here. And they're all in the 200s range. This is crazy, but uh, we're going to take the lowest ranked prospect here, or highest ranked prospect in Ludwig Hornquist. Let's see how he turns out. And he's 68 rated. Oh, that is a sixth round pick and a half. Wow. Um, no physicality on a six foot two, 194 defender. But a very interesting player build there for a sixth round pick. He could be in the NHL within a year if he develops properly. That's crazy. Um, Machasic there. Patrick Machasic looks really good. Uh, high starter and farmer. And yeah, Hornquist is easily the best pick of the last three rounds or so. Up next, we're going to go with... I'm going to be looking all day if I do that. Okay. Um, up next, I think I have to go with... See, as much as I want to say Rasmussen because he's ranked higher, I think I have to say Zykov because he's a two-year ETA. Again, this is insane. Um, let's take him and see how good he is. And he's also 68 rated. Oh, oh my goodness. That's two 68 rated players in the sixth round at pick 186 and 168. That's crazy. Can these guys please wear number 68 and 86? That would be so cool. Um, just because of where they're drafted. And it's like, yeah, we were sixth round picks. We wear number six in our number because of how late we were drafted just to remind you guys so that's something special um i'm really expecting those two guys to turn into legitimate players on this team in the near future and with the last two picks in this draft we have to go with rasmussen and hoyle i think so i'm gonna take rasmussen first and he is indeed a low elite uh 50 rated low elite sniper and over to pick 218 um yeah wow that was something else that was potentially the best draft i have ever executed in my entire franchise mode career like just <sighs> look at that draft elite top six top four elite 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 top four elite Elite, 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 elite. <laughs> Not only that, but Hornquist and Zykov as sixth rounders are 68 rated each at 19 years old. I, I am, I'm at a loss for words. This is the most ridiculously good draft I have ever, ever put together in my franchise mode career. Let's see. As we get through the rest of this Minnesota franchise mode, let's see how many of these names within five years are actually on the Minnesota Wild and are actually playing minutes for this team. I wouldn't be surprised if just about all of them are, except maybe like Dominguez. But like apart from that, I literally can't think up of any other names that that shouldn't make this team eventually. Maybe Hoyle, maybe Rasmussen, but they're seventh rounders to be fair. So yeah that was insane um and i think that's honestly where we're gonna wrap this video up it's been a bit of a long haul video based on the fact that the trading took forever and the simming took a little while off the beginning but yeah we've got a re-signing phase coming up here where we have money now we should have money now maybe not um we should be able to sign a guy like happy bull into whatever he wants we got 9.1 million there um, so that's good. McGinn's going to be cheap. We traded away, um, what's his name? We traded away Troy Chen to give Sheldon Taylor space to potentially grow and to give, well, really a guy like Ruslan Kvasha room to grow because he's, he should be playing in the team next year. So 
yeah, that's the situation. That's the team. Oh my goodness, Dominguez grew up to an 81 as well. We're going to have to have him playing in the team. He was literally drafted three years ago, and for a fifth round pick, he's turned into something very special as well. We got Najelkovic in the system, which isn't going to be happening. I think, if anything, we're going to see a guy like Jose Strudwick coming up as a backup next year. But yeah, the team is in good shape. Like, I'm really happy where we're at. We're going to be able to re-sign all our players. We might be able to get a few guys like Rousseau or, um, or Joshua Weston or a couple guys like that into the team next year as rookies, but we'll see how their development goes and things like that. But that's going to be it for this one. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to go down below, drop a like, subscribe, and hit notifications. And of course, leave your comments and opinions on that draft. Like, what do you think about that draft? That was that was just insane. So that's it for me. This is Ichanius signing out. Until next time.